Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over the current implementation of masking in TextMesh Pro for Unity 4.6. So the intent of the video is to basically get your feedback on the current implementation. So let's get going. So I'm going to go to the Create Menu, pick UI, and we're going to add a nice button. Let's uh, focus on our button. We're going to change the size of the button, make it a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. We're going to expand the button and wave goodbye to the UI text component. Bye. Um, we're going to change the color of the button because gray is kind of boring. So let's make it blue. And let's add a text mesh pro component to it. So um, in the current beta that you guys are using, if you are to select the button and go create UI and text mesh pro, it adds the text mesh pro object as a sibling to whatever in the version that I'm using right now that you guys will get your hands on shortly. If you select the object, right click UI and text mesh pro. Now it adds it as a child. So left click is a sibling, right click is basically a child to whatever is selected. Um, so that's, what I wanted to cover. Now let's take a look at adding a mask. And let's talk about how the masking works first of all. Uh, so if I pick my text mesh pro object and expand the debug panel, there's uh, extra stuff in there which is things related to a stencil. So basically masking is implemented uh, via a stencil uh, on, in Unity. And basically this stencil is a property or the stencil parts are properties of the material. Now, uh, as a result, if I was to duplicate this object here, control D, and now we have two objects. Um, still, we don't have a mask yet, but these two objects share the same material. Well, if they share the same material, something I didn't realize uh, when I first looked at masking in Unity 4.6 is if they both share the same material, how can you have one masked and the other not masked? Well, you can't unless you create instances of those material. Now, it's not really apparent when you're using um, UI text or uh, Unity's uh, the images in, in Unity 4.6 because they don't really expose the material panel or the material properties. So although they're using instances, you don't realize it or see it. So if you were to take a look at the stats and your draw calls, you would notice that if you're using a bunch of object with masking on it, that you're getting a draw call for each of those because they're actually using instance materials as opposed to still sharing the same material. So let's add, let's delete one object and let's add our masking component so we can take a look at masking itself. So UI mask. Now we've added the mask. If I go back and select the text mesh pro object and move it around, we can see that we are effectively being masked. Let's duplicate this again. Now we have two masks. Let's move uh, the mask of this guy here. Let's take the other guy and move the mask on the left. And let's go back to our top guy and disable the masking. So as you can see, we have two text objects and they are individually being controlled in terms of the masking. Now, um, how is that reflected in the editor panel? Well, you can see that this guy masking is enabled. So it says it's using the Arial SDF material masking. So it's actually using an instance of the original material. Whereas this other guy, which is I guess I'll change the order since it's up there. So this guy up here is actually still using the normal material. Now, one of the added complexities of implementing masking in Unity 4.6 with Text Mesh Pro was, is if you look at UI text, uh, they don't even expose a material panel. So um, whether you're using an instance or not, doesn't really matter. It's not like you're gonna change anything on the material. But in the case of Text Mesh Pro, uh, let me disable masking on both components here. In the case of Text Mesh Pro, we have all these uh, shiny sliders to play with, you know, from uh, softness, dilation, the thickness, the underlay for the shadow, and so on and so forth. So clearly, I want, you know, 
these buttons to do something. So in this case, masking is disabled, and the way it works normally in Text Mesh Pro is both these objects are sharing the same material, and therefore, if I was to change dilation, both objects would be affected by it. So let's go to point two. And if I was to add an outline, we would see that you know both objects are affected by it. But let's think about this. What if I enable masking on this guy up here? Now suddenly they won't be sharing the same material and changes made to one object would not be reflected on the other object because hey, it's not the same material anymore. And if we look at it, this guy is still using the SDF material, but this guy here is using an instance material. So what I wanted was to make sure that it was intuitive because again, unless I explain what I just explained to a normal user, they would see, hey, this is using Aerial SDF, this is using Aerial SDF, and yet when I change the thickness, it's not reflected in both. Well, guess what? It is. So I add to add the functionality to make sure I can track what the base material is for each object, and then whether it's using the derived masking version from the base or not, the changes that you make to the base, right now I'm changing the base material and right now I'm changing the instance material, it reflects the change on both of them. So as long as they're both sharing the same base, the change will be reflected in both. So let's reset this because I'm actually changing the default material and resetting one or the other, same thing affects both. Now let's add a third object and move it somewhere so we can see it. And to this third object, let's drag and drop a different material. So these materials are basically assets. So when I describe base material, think of them as uh, assets that exist on file or on disk. Uh, so if I was to drag the outline, well, let me first select the object. So if I take this Arial SDF outline material and drag it here, you can see that now it has an outline material. It doesn't affect the other ones because I'm assigning a new material to different objects, right? I could assign that one the outline. I could assign, uh, well, I have to again select the object, pick this object and give it the one with the drop shadow. And this other object, let's also give it, uh, well, again, select the object, give it the drop shadow. So now we have two objects which share the drop shadow material and one object that doesn't. So same thing, masking is enabled, masking is disabled. So we pick the top object just for fun and let's disable the shadow. As you can see, the change is reflected in both. Now, changing the bottom material, um, since these guys don't share the same base, will have no effect on the other object. It only affects that one. So basically, um, that's most of it for masking. It's all working now. I just need to uh, do a lot more testing to make sure it's all solid. Um, I'm pretty confident I should be able to get something out tomorrow. I do have other tweaks I need to make based on other changes I've made, not related to masking, but I still need to polish some of that. But it actually went much better today than I expected in terms of getting this behavior working. Um, let me show one more example. Uh, and go to my uh, test scenes and load one of the masking example. Let's recenter the screen. So in this example here, uh, I'm using, uh, and let me navigate here to the prefab. So in this example, I'm using, I have two objects. One has masking enabled, the other one has masking disabled. Um, and both of them are using a prefab of a text mesh pro object. So if I select the prefab and I change the text, this is new text. You can see that changing the prefab, the change is reflected across both objects, still respecting the masking. If I pick one of the objects and go in, is this still okay? And I apply that change it's reflected in both. So right now it's working with prefabs, it's working with normal objects, so it's looking pretty good. So that's basically it for this video. So please uh, give me some feedback, let me know if this seems to work for you guys, and uh, I'll uh, catch you in a forum. Thanks for watching.